And here we have the PowerBuilder.net 12.5 IDE. Let's go ahead and create a new data window object. We'll open up the new dialog and we see that it is already open to the data window node for new objects. And we will keep the tabular presentation style selected. We said that there are a number of other presentation styles available, but we'll keep this more simplistic one for this particular primer on PowerBuilder data windows. We'll click Next, give it a somewhat intuitive name. And click Next. And we see that there are four major data sources available for data window objects. Uh, one of them is an SQL relational source. Uh, the second is the external capability, which allows you to manually, so to speak, populate the data window from your code. Also, stored procedure and web service calls may not only retrieve the data window's data into its buffers, but the data window may also use its data intelligence to persist any modifications via these stored procedure and or web service calls. And we'll go ahead and define the SQL statement in this case. And for now, we will pick a single table, the employee table, and we will begin to graphically paint the SQL select statement. Let's go ahead and pick employee ID, first name, last name, and uh, department ID. And for simplicity's sake, the remaining one we will choose at this point is the phone number for the employee. Let's say that this is a phone listing. So we see what has been happening here in the syntax tab page down below. We see that there is a preview available of that select statement. Uh, in addition to being able to paint the select statement graphically, we can also convert it to syntax. If we prefer to type in the select statement or paste it in from another software package, we may do so. But let's go ahead and change the design view back to graphics and we'll click OK to accept this select statement. And here's the Power Builder data window syntax version of that select statement. We'll click Next, and we'll accept the default border and color settings. And click Next, and this is our last chance to review uh, the choices that we have made up to this point. We can always modify them later, and we will click Finish. So here is our data window object within the data window painter. In PowerBuilder.net, not only will this generate WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation data window objects, but the data window painter itself is rendered, drawn with WPF. And we see that we have not only the layout available in the painter, but we can also preview the data within uh, the layout here in the preview tab page. In addition to the preview tab page, we also have the data view. Uh, which we can populate with the raw data uh, arising from this SQL select statement. Uh, this is what is represented by the primary buffer, but we'll discuss data window buffers in a future video. And we also have column specifications available. Minimal modification may be made here as well. Now let's say that we wanted to have employees with departments. Uh, well, let's go ahead and modify that select statement. We will go ahead and go up to the design menu item select data source, and we see we have a graphical representation back here in the query painter. What I want to do is to add the department table in this test database. I click open, and we see that Power Builder has been pretty handy in assuming that we want a default join to be created, and in fact, in this case, Power Builder has been correct. We have this graphical representation of a join, but we have the ability to choose multiple flavors of the join if we wish. This is dependent upon which database interface that we're using at this point to connect to our relational source. So here is the join. We see that there is a representation of the join here in this where, uh, where clause. And we'll go ahead and select department name to add that to the result set. OK, I'll click OK. To accept that, and we see that there has been an update specification change. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video about the update capabilities of data window objects at runtime, as well as in design time as well. But we'll click OK for now, and we see that the department name has been added to the layout by default for us. Let me go ahead and make a minimal uh, cosmetic modification to the layout, and I will move the phone column in the layout over just to provide a little bit more room. I'll select the department name column 
move it over here next to the department ID. And I know that the department names in this test database are not that long, so I'll go ahead and take this opportunity to narrow the width of this particular column. And I'll go over to my preview to see how that's changed uh, the visual aspect for the user. Okay, I like that. Of course, I could add a textual item up here in the header band, more about data window bands in another video. Uh, but I think that this suffices for now. What I'm going to do is to save this data window object, and we see that has persisted the asterisk next to this tab page representation of it on the tab itself has lost the asterisk so that it denotes that it's no longer dirty, so to speak, that the changes have been saved. And that is our data window object having been defined. What we want to do now is let's see what those other presentation styles available are. Uh, we just used a tabular presentation style just for simplicity's sake, but let's go ahead and see some of the other presentation styles available with Power Builder. So here's a reformed data window object uh, within a data window control on the window. We'll talk about data window controls versus data window objects in another video. But let's go ahead and flip through each of these presentation styles so you can get a first gander at what's available. So here's freeform, single row viewed at a time, and tabular with a little bit different cosmetic modifications. Uh, very simple, only five minutes to make these modifications in the data window painter as well as grouped data windows. Just an aside, the freeform and tabular and group data window presentation styles are really all the same processing under the hood. You could manually move the columns around, add bands, uh, group trailers, headers, etc., manually, so to speak, in the painter if you wish, since those three data windows are in fact one and the same presentation style with different formatting. And here is a grid data window Columns can be resized, columns can be moved by the user without any code necessary from you, the developer. And the label data window presentation style. Cross tab presentation style. I've left a little bit of room here in the header band. You'll see why in just a moment. And end up a newspaper column style presentation style. And we'll see that I have chosen the left to right and then down type of presentation, but you can also choose the left column down and then all right column down presentation if you want. And then rich text, you can use this for uh, in 1980s terms, a mail merge if you wish. In other words, the uh, customer data here in this data window object is actually fields. The name, the company name, etc. are all fields in the data window, and you can add the static text to this in a rich text format. We see that there is a rich text toolbar here available by default. Uh, you can hide that if you don't like this particular graphic representation of that and supply your own uh, type of toolbar for the rich text presentation style if you wish. And here's a tree view. The tree view presentation style uh, uses that select statement and without any code from you, you get this tree view by default. I've chosen a particular flavor of the tree view presentation style to include uh, grid lines as well. So this is actually two presentation styles in one, arguably, a uh, hybrid of tree view and uh, grid presentation style. Now, mind you, you can use this particular presentation style to update the data. Very easy to do, perhaps too easy. I don't know if I'd recommend that you use the tree view presentation style for allowing the user to edit the data but here it is, and we have provided that option, if your team deems it appropriate. In addition to tree view, we have different graph presentation styles available, a dozen or more of them by default from Power Builder. You can also add third party uh, charting capabilities to Power Builder as well. But here's the native, uh, one rendition of the native graphing capability for the data window object. And here's a nested data window. In fact, there is a parent primary data window object here. And offline, I've created a second data window object, which in this nested data window, 
I'm using as a child data window. So I'm actually asking Power Builder to, without any code necessary for me, passing the parent's column values down to the nested child data window here in this case to be able to retrieve the detail of the each department's employees. Uh, more about child data windows in another video. And here's a composite data window. Remember in the cross tab example, I had left perhaps arguably too much room visually in the header band of the data window object, but that allowed me to then create this uh, second version of it that is a composite of, in this case, two data windows. Uh, you can have more than two if you wish, but in this case, I've used the cross tab data window in combination with a graph presentation style data window. In fact, uh, this is two child data windows in one parent uh, as peers of each other rather than in the nested fashion that we saw before. Let's go ahead and look at the newest presentation style for the data window and that is the candlestick presentation style. Now certainly the data window presentation styles I've already shown you are just the starting point. Because Power Builder is .NET, Power Builder is WPF, you can go shopping as it were to all the third-party WPF vendors to look for their charting packages, their visual components, and they can be utilized within not just Power Builder solutions, but within the Power Builder data windows themselves. You can take advantage of the data windows data intelligence, which we will cover in another video, uh, to not only retrieve the data uh, into these third party components and charts, but also to be able to use the data windows data intelligence to persist the users and your modifications out to your relational stored procedure or web service source. For additional and much more detailed information on data window creation and presentation styles, navigate to cybooks.sybase.com, choose Power Builder, and choose your supported GA version. Navigate to the user's guide and scroll down to defining data window objects. You notice that we have enhancing data window objects as well as working with controls, working with nested reports, working with graphs, cross tabs, tree views, etc., etc. And that is just the start of the wealth of capabilities that are available to you with data window technology within Power Builder. Thank you very much for your attention.